I'm David Griffin, it's the 7th of July 2018 and I'm here at Darley Abbey Cricket Club in Derby and I'm talking to Dave Jepson. David, a very good morning to you. Morning Dave. And a beautiful morning it is as well. Um, it's hard to imagine or hard to believe really that we're so close to uh, the centre of a city. Um, but we are and what I'd like to do is just first of all start off by asking you about your introduction into to cricket. Okay, uh, well I can take that back to the very early days. My father was a keen sportsman all round, he was in the army and he introduced me to cricket on a very uh, a very ad hoc basis, there were no formalised clubs or anything like that, so we played uh, basically out at the back in the garden or in the, in the fields or wherever it might have been um, and we were overseas as well, so of course there's no formalised cricket in Norway or Belgium or where, wherever we happened to be living uh, to any great extent. Um, so really it, it was just playing with friends and, and other army families until the age of 11 when we moved back to uh, we moved back to Derbyshire and uh, we joined the local club at Rosley and that's where I got my first introduction to formalised club, village club cricket. Uh, there was no junior cricket, we just played senior cricket so at the age of 11 I was pitched into the uh, to the senior side to go and play and my first game was at uh, Sheffield University in April 1975. Wow. So that's 44 seasons ago now. It's interesting you mentioned that about senior cricket because there's been a shift hasn't there over the, the years we're both a similar age, similar vintage where clubs have taken over actually from schools, would that be fair to say? So were you, were you able to play your age cricket at school at that time? Certainly uh, age cricket was more formalised and we played against different schools. I was at Lady Manor School in uh, Bakewell but we would have played uh, Ernest Bailey's in Matlock, we played against Buxton, probably Queen Elizabeth Ashbourne and Ecclesbourne, Duffield certainly a four or five that spring to mind, there would be one or two others over Chesterfield Way I guess as well. So although the uh, the summer term for cricket at school was quite short. We certainly managed to fit some games in, and it was part of the formalised PE curriculum as yes. well. Um, so in the summer, you would go out and play uh, during your games lessons. Um, so, so I guess we th there was no junior cricket to speak of at my local village club, although there was sort of a, a, a Dales um, under 18s or under 15s or whatever it yeah. might have been league. But I wasn't part of that. And in, in all my uh, junior years up there, I can only recall playing two junior games with my club. It was just senior cricket and, uh, and you were selected partially on merit and partially on the opportunity to have a game. Um, and one of the things that you always did if you wanted to play and you weren't selected was you went anyway in the hope that somebody maybe didn't turn up for whatever reason. Yeah. And, uh, and as 12th man you got in as 11th man or even as 12th man you got on the field for a bit of time. Um, and if you didn't do that, then you went and you helped out a bit. You might have done a bit of scoring or uh, just done a bit with the tees or, or generally uh, tried to help out. So yeah. that was just part, part of it. You didn't necessarily expect to play every week, um, but you just wanted to be part of the club. And was club cricket then uh, league, league cricket or were you playing friendly cricket? No, that was all friendly or? cricket no. uh, um, or non-league, I think I would call it, because um, friendly cricket has a, has a different misnomer now. Uh, to, to what it did then. It was very competitive and people played to win. There was just no league points at the end of it. Yeah. Um, the fixture lists tend to be very long-standing and, and you'd play the same team on the same weekend, year in, year out. Some of them would have re return fixtures in the same season, so you'd play them twice. Others, you would go to the opposition's ground the following year. Um, but they were long set and a, a lot of the clubs were obviously uh, Dale's clubs, uh, but the Chesterfield, Sheffield clubs as well while we were playing up there. And one or two a bit coming this way. We always used to play our first game of the season at Muggington. Oh, really? Uh, on the second uh, second Saturday in April. I wonder how that came about then in the I don't know. history of... It must have been a friend of a friend, somebody knew somebody, I guess, and it just became yeah, that. It just became first the, the first fixture of the season. And, yeah. and we played there in the snow. Really? <laughs> so played, at, played at your grave in the snow as well. Yeah, it could be very cold. Muggington's uh, up on top of the hill, as I'm yeah. sure you're aware, and uh, if the wind blows in the wrong direction, it's a bit chilly. Yeah. Um, but that was it. The start of the season was, uh, was always away at Muggington in those days. And we, uh, and we always had the day off for cup final day as well. Oh, remember right. That. It, it was, was it, it, the first it, week in May, wasn't it? It was the first yeah. week in May, and the Saturday um, was always in the fixture as cup final day. Yeah. And, and, and you didn't play. It's ironic, because we're sitting here today, and... In years to come, people will uh, be able to. We, we may be talking about potential World Cup winners in football because, of course, yep. the cricketing schedule today is all over the place, isn't it? Because England are playing. England are playing uh, Sweden, Sweden in the quarter final at yes. uh, three o'clock this afternoon, uh, to digress slightly. So, 
So if the teams have agreed, they can start earlier or to fit the football in. So our first team going to Ashover and starting at half past 11. And I was talking to a lad at work yesterday who plays at Micklover, and they're starting at 9 o'clock at Ticknell. Yeah, I've heard a few up yeah. in the north of, the, uh, north of England are doing that. But I was talking to someone yesterday about San Diego's game, and they're starting at 11, but they're having a two-hour two hour tea break in the middle to watch the football. football yeah. <laughs> well, we'll have to hope it doesn't go to penalties and extra time and all that sort of thing. Well, case. unfortunately, the weather's good, because if the weather yep. turned and you know it was a bit iffy, you could have games, you could be sitting in the pavilion watching the football while the sun's shining, and then... Rain yep. when you resume that the game. That's true. That's true. But, uh, I think we'll get away with that. Mm. Um, David, did you have any cricketing ambitions at that time? I mean, we, we, how talented were you? How what, what you were you looking at a particular level to reach or or not? I don't think I was particularly. You always wanted to try and be the best that you could, I guess. Um, but uh, having not had a, a real, I didn't really know what cricketing uh, sphere was. I mean, we were in a village club, and that was it. Um, I had a couple of trials at Derbyshire with the Colts, particularly when it came down, first moved down to Derby, but didn't get in, and that was it, really. Who was um, around at that time? Um, yeah. The one that sticks out particularly would have been Andy Brown. He, he, was, yeah. he was there, and he went on to play county cricket, obviously. Sure. And it was his father who was in charge of the selection process, John, John of course, JD, yeah. uh, at the time. So we had a trial there, but that didn't work, and I just carried on playing club cricket. So uh, we got involved down here. It's sort of, it a neat juxtaposition. We moved to Derby in 1980 and had no club to go to and myself and my brother were playing out in the backyard on Kettleston Road or just off Kettleston Road and the next door neighbour came out and saw a chap called Keith Hamilton and he said uh, he said, oh, do you two lads want a game of cricket this afternoon uh, we're a couple short and that's how we got involved really? with the Abbey pub cricket side uh, the Abbey pub being the local pub in the, in the village here they were a couple short, so we went and played, and, and the rest is, as they say, history. Um, I would have been 16, my brother would have been about 11, um, and we became regular fixtures uh, as a result of that, really. Well, clearly it's been a, a long journey, because now you are a senior figure here at, um, at Darley Abbey. But I'm interested in that journey, really, in, in how did that happen? So you've come and played some... some I mean, did you, did you come back after that one-off game, or, or did you see it as a one-off game, or did you think, I found a club? What was the, the process of becoming a Darley Abbey cricketer? Well, at the time, we, it was very much based out of the pub, and we weren't old enough to go in it, so <laughs> we weren't part of the social scene. But, as happens with pub sides, I guess, on a fairly regular basis, they're short of players. And having played this game for them, uh, we were asked back on a, on a regular place. And we hadn't got a club at the time here, so we just went and played as, as, as much as we could. At the time, they played, uh, this ground wasn't here, they played on Darley Fields, so, o- over the way, just across the river, where there are a number of council laid pitches, about 11 or 12 on there, and, and they just pitched up there, or, or went were and Were they long away. established, Dave? Had they been no, 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 they, they were only established in about 19, 1980, it might have been their first season, right. actually, uh, the very first year of its existence. Um, so, uh, so whenever we got the opportunity, we just went and played it, and it, and it stuck really. We enjoyed it. Um, they obviously wanted us to play regularly for them, and over the years, we became more regular players uh, and quite senior players quite quite quickly. I was the captain of the side within about three years. I was only about nineteen. I'm interested in how a team in the modern age. It's one thing for it to happen in the 1800s and what have you, but in 1980, I mean, some guys sitting in a pub saying, let's form a cricket team, was it? Absolutely. Was it as yeah. simple as that? It was as simple as that. The, the pub itself had only recently opened. It had been a derelict uh, building for a long time, and uh, had opened as the pub. And it and it was just one of those, um, I guess, natural social things that happen in, in pubs, really. Let's have a darts team, let's have a dominoes team, why don't we have a cricket team? And, and it was literally the locals in the pub sat round one night said, uh, well, we'll have a cricket team, and that's where it all began. <laughs> and we sort of came in on the coattails of that. Yeah. So how did it all become what it is today? Where, where's the, the background to what is now Darley Abbey Cricket Club and this beautiful setting uh, surrounded by trees? I mean, you could literally be in a tiny little village, couldn't you, in the middle of the Cotswolds or somewhere like that. It's so. Well, if I take it back historically first, because uh, doing a bit of delving, um, there are records of cricket in Darley Abbey going back to the 1880s, 1890s. Now, I, I've not looked into this into too great a detail, but at the time, Darley Park and Darley Hall up the way um, were, were a, almost a sort of stately manner, really, and there would have been people working on the estate at the time, and I guess it was those people that set the cricket club up, and I'm not quite sure where the cricket ground was at that time, 
but if we fast forward about four, 40 or 50 years, firstly the cricket and the records die out in the sort of the late 1920s, which coincides with the with the uh, the death of uh, Lady Evans, who was the last person uh, living. So I suspect that once she passed away, the raison d'etre of the estate itself finished, yeah. and consequently the cricket club finished with it. Um, but once the house had fallen into uh, was no longer used, it became the place for Derby Central School, and they moved in here sometime in the late 1930s, I think, and until about 1958, and they used this ground for playing football on, and I think they play cricket on here as well. Indeed, over in the back, behind my shoulder, there is an old concrete uh, cricket strip, as, a, as one of the old net strips, oh, right, yeah. um, which is evidence that there was some sport played on here, and indeed, um, reading some, some local history, the outward bound centre that's over my left shoulder was an open Dutch barn, but that provided the shelter for them to actually get changed before they came and played football on what they called the cow patch, which was this. Now, Derby School fin or the Central School finished here in 1958, um, and the field became just a cow field, really. It was a fenced off cow field. Um, and then in the early 1980s, the, uh, the Abbey Cricket Club had been formed, and we used to play Brackensfield Cricket Club uh, from Alverston on a fairly regular basis. And we got on along pretty well with them, uh, both of us playing our home games on Derby Fields. And we got talking to them, and uh, agreed it would be a good idea if we had our own ground um, and the powers that be at the time of which I wasn't one particularly decided that this would be the location for it and spoke to the council because it's a council ground who agreed to lay a cricket pitch so out of a cow field came this cricket ground uh, and that was 1986 the first game that was played here August 1986 um, and over the years we've just developed the ground so we imagine it as Stretching as far as you can see over to those trees, it was just one big cow field, really. Um, and now you look at this as a, as a pristine cricket ground, and, uh, and there's been a lot of work and time and effort had to go in by a lot of people to, to get it to there, and cooperation and, and help from the council as well to make it happen. What facilities were there then, David, when the, the, the club came into that mid-80s period? I mean, did, did, did the club have to work on the ground to get it to the condition it's in? Uh, or was that done for you? No, the, the, ground, the ground was always worked on by the council. So they did the square, particularly, but they also did the outfield. And indeed, they still cut the outfield for us to, to this day. O over the years, um, we started to take on more work. As the council budget started to dry up and it became more difficult for them to do it, we started to do more work on the square. We got our own machinery uh, and just built that up. And now we do all of that ourselves. Um, but the council still helped us out by cutting the pitch. In terms of facilities themselves, there was nothing here. It was just an open field. And our first pavilion was a, was a green hut, which had been the score box at International Combustions Old Ground on, oh, really? on Duffield Road. That's Colin Tunnicliffe's old club, Correct, it? yeah, that, that's Combustion, right. Yeah. And it so happened that at the time that we were just setting the ground up here, the ground at Duffield Road was being sold for housing. And this no. green hut, and it was a, quite a large green hut, yeah. it wasn't a, a little shed, yeah. um, <coughs> was surplus to requirements. So we actually took it down piece by piece, transported it down here and rebuilt it. And it sat in the trees just along on my right hand side here, uh, just, in, just in the trees there. Uh, and that was the first pavilion. It's fascinating when you look at the, um, the way in which, again we talked about how uh, clubs have developed, but how grounds have developed to the various categories now of grounds that you look back at, at presumably there were no shower facilities or things like that back then. It was, you know, you played your game, went to the pub and the next time it's you saw a shower that. was when you got home. That's right, yeah, simple as that. So what sort of standard were was the, I mean, presumably you joined the league, would it have been, what league were you playing in then, the Derby well, the, League? The, or the, 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 when the two clubs came here, they existed as separate clubs for a number of years, mm. and the pub side remained a pub side and played cricket on Sunday afternoons and midweek, Wednesday mm. evenings. Uh, Brackensfield side actually joined the Derby and District League right. in the late 1980s, so they played the first league cricket on this ground, and eventually they went into the Burton League when the Derby and District League folded. Um, and then the two clubs amalgamated in 1993, which made sense really to pool yeah. all the resources. Um, and played the first season in the Burton League and then joined the Derbyshire County League in 1994 as a single club called Brackensfield Darley Abbey. Right. 
By that time, the first brick pavilion had been built here. Um, so the grain shed had gone, and, and they got themselves a purpose-built uh, pavilion with changing rooms and showers and a bar and a general room and a very nice sort of um, wooden veranda as well. It was quite villagey in look, to, to be how, honest with you. How, well, how challenging was that, David, to, to create... You know, you've talked about creating the ground, but at least you can see how, you know, you've got people to cut the grass and you've got the square. And once that's done, it's kind of a case of maintaining it. But to actually build from nothing a pavilion must have been quite a challenge financially. And financially, it was very challenging and it, look, it took a long time. Um, and there, weren't the, there wasn't the sort of money around in terms of grants no. uh, then as, the, as there is now. And it was about five years in the making, and eventually the, the, the base of the pavilion had been down for some time, the footings had been built, been built up to this level. We're on a floodplain, so the, the base of the pavilion that was sat on had to be built above the natural of course, level yeah. of the flood. So that base had been built and had been down for a while, but the money to actually finish it off yeah. um, was very difficult to raise. And in the end, they went back to the council and, and said, look, this is going to sit here forever without you giving us yeah. some form of help here. Um, and collectively, they, they found the money and the will to, to make it happen. And the pavilion was officially opened in, I think, about 1993. And what, what was your position at that time in the club? Because you said you'd become the captain when you were young. So well, you I'd moved away by that time, and I was going to play the, my best cricket reel. I was playing at West Hallam in, oh, right. in, yeah. a, in, a, in Division 1 of the County League, the, the, be, the best division of the County League. Um, so I'd stepped away in about 1990 um, while this was going on before returning in 1996. Um, so I'd been the captain from about 1983 to about 88, and then I stepped away from that, uh, and then played for another season before going and playing and putting all my eggs in the basket at West Hallam, really. Yeah. Um, was that a cricketing challenge for you to try it and It was, because, you? yeah, I was playing Lawrence's. league cricket on a Saturday at International Combustion at the time, in, uh, I think, Division 3, but I wanted to go and see what it was like in Division 1. Yeah. And West Ham asked me to go and play on the back of a, a game I played against them for combustion in a, in a cup match. Uh, and so I went. Um, I had no preconception of going to West Hallam. I barely even knew where it was, to be honest with you. I played the odd game there. But they were the first club that asked me, so I went and played. And, uh, and it was the best cricket that I played in my career. Yeah. And I thoroughly enjoyed it as well. Well, yeah. it's been a fascinating start to, to finding out something about you and about uh, Darley Abbey Cricket Club. But for now, we'll uh, leave it there. And thank you. Lovely, thank you very much Dave.